Hello everyone, now we will discuss on the topic environmental quality and standards part 2. In the part 1 of this topic, we have discussed on the ambient air quality standards and then water quality parameters. Now, we will continue this and we will cover water quality standards industrial effluence and emissions and standards, noise pollution standards and vehicular pollution and standards in this class. So, we have seen that TDS, TSS etcetera are some important parameters of water. Now, we will see on the basis of application how the water can be classified and how the different quality parameter values are necessary for these applications. For example, we can classify the water into category A, B, C, D and E, even less than E also. So, A category that is drinking water source without conventional treatment, but with chlorination. So, this water does not require any conventional treatment except the chlorination. So, that is A a class we can get it and in this case primary water quality criteria is total coliform organisms that is most probable number MPN per 100 ml shall be 50 or less pH 6.5 and 8.5 in between this and dissolved oxygen 6 mg per liter or more and biochemical oxygen demand 2 mg per liter or less. So, this is category A. Similarly, category B that is for outdoor bathing, then it has total coliform 500 or less, pH 6.5 and 8.5 the same and then dissolved oxygen 5 mg per liter. So, it is less lesser than that and BOD is also more than the category 1 or category A. Similarly, for C category drinking water source with conventional treatment. So, here total coliform is 5000 or less pH between 6 and 9 and dissolved oxygen 4 mg per liter and BOD 3 mg per liter or less. And then category D that is propagation of wildlife and fisheries that can be used for this application. So, pH 6.5 to 8.5 and dissolved oxygen 4 mg per liter or more and then free ammonia 1.2 mg per liter or less. Similarly, for E type which is used for irrigation, industrial cooling and controlled disposal is necessary for this. So, here pH is in between 6 and 8.5 uh, and then sodium adsorption ratio less than 26 and boron less than 2 mg per liter. So, these are important parameter of the E type of water. Now, one interesting point we have come to know that is sodium adsorption ratio. Now, let us see what this is. So, sodium adsorption ratio or SAR we can mention here. So, this can be calculated by the formula concentration of N A plus ion divided by root of calcium 2 plus and magnesium 2 plus ion divided by 2 that means, the average concentration of these two if we take the root and if we divide any plus concentration by these values then we will get the SAR or sodium adsorption ratio. So, to make the water suitable for agricultural application this SAR value should be below certain limit and that is SAR less than 3, the water is suitable for irrigation use, but if it is 3 to 9 present some huge restrictions, but SAR values in excess of 9 normally mean that water cannot be used for irrigation. However, in India SAR standard for irrigation water is set to 26, how it is possible? Because this reflects the fact that sodium does not build up in the soil 
and cause damage because every monsoon season the soil is thoroughly flushed and renewed. So, if sodium is present in the water, so that will be giving some neg negative impact to the soil, its electrical conductivity will be reduced, its hydraulic conductivity will be reduced, surface crusting can happen and infiltration property will be reduced, water penetration will be reduced. So, SAR sodium adsorption ratio is very very important parameter of water for its agricultural application and this term that is sodium percentage is calculated and it is defined as concentration of sodium into 100 divided by sum of the concentration of sodium, potassium, calcium and magnesium and this is expressed in milli equivalent per liter and this value sodium percentage value should not be more than 60. Okay. Now, in waters where the bicarbonate content is higher then bicarbonate reacts with calcium, magnesium etcetera and precipitate out as carbonates. As a result what happens in this formula if calcium magnesium is removed then this sodium percentage will increase. Okay. The residual sodium carbonate how much sodium carbonate residual is there another parameter is also defined accordingly. So, that is equal to R S C that is equal to C O 3 minus plus H C O 3 minus minus C A plus 2 plus M G plus 2 that means equivalent amount of calcium and magnesium will consume equivalent amount of these two remaining will be available and that is called residual sodium carbonate. Okay. So, by that way also you can say how much sodium is present in the water and different parameters we are getting one is your sodium adsorption ratio, one is percentage of sodium another is your RSC or residual sodium carbonate. So, if its value exceeds that is RSC value exceeds 2.5 milli equivalent per liter the water is not suitable and 2.5 to 1.25 is marginal and less than 1.25 is safe. Now, we will see drinking water quality standards. So, there are number of parameters which are considered for defining the quality of drinking water like say color, odor, turbidity, dissolved solids, pH, alkalinity that is total alkalinity, total hardness and these are the values. So, color should be colorless, odor should not be objectionable, unobjectionable, turbidity 5 NTU and dissolved solids 500 and then pH 6.5 to 8.5 and total alkalinity 200 mg per liter and total hardness 300 mg per liter. And then chlorides, fluoride, sulphate, nitrate and the values are chloride is 250 mg per liter, fluoride 1.5 mg per liter and 200 mg per liter for sulphate and nitrate as nitrate or as nitrogen. So, 45 as nitrate and 10 mg per liter as nitrogen. So, these are the different quality parameters of drinking water. Now, for treated effluents means any waste water after treatment when it will come into the surface water then what will be the quality parameters that is provided in this table that is ammoniacal nitrogen, ammonia, arsenic, beautify, boron, cadmium, chloride, chromium total, COD and then chromium hexavalent. So, you all in mg per liter unit and these are the values like say ammoniacal nitrogen 50. Here we are saying that three different options for its disposal after treatment may be inland surface water or may be public sewer or may be irrigated land. So, public sewer means the after initial treatment the water is going to the public sewer. So, that will be further treated. So, that is why its value are quite higher slightly higher than the uh, inland surface water disposal. Inland surface water means directly it is going to the river. 
So, here when it is going to public sewer that means, it will be getting another opportunity to be treated. So, that is these values are relatively higher than this you see here and irrigated land also the quality requirement is different with respect to inlet surface water. Okay. So, these are the different parameter values like say arsenic 0.2 here and this is for 0 0.5, this is 0 0.2 again mg per liter, BOD 30, 250, 100 and boron 2, 2 and 2 mg per liter, cadmium 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 mg per liter, chloride 600 in all the cases and chromium 0 0.5 and then 1 and 1 and then COD here 250 and public sewer 400, again it is 400 for irrigated land and chromium hexavalent chromium 0 0.11 1 and 1. Similarly, for copper DO dissolved oxygen, electrical conductivity, total dissolved solids, fluoride, sulphide, iron, total general nitrogen, lead, manganese and mercury, the values are also provided here you see copper 0 0.5, 3 and 3. So, when it is dissolved oxygen 4.528, 4 4.528, 4 4.528. So, that is constant the same for all the cases and electrical conductivity is also same for all the cases and dissolved solids is also same for all the cases and then fluoride it is 7, it is 15, it is 10 and then sulphide 1, 2 and 2 mg per liter, iron 2, 2 and 2 and then gelder nitrogen 100, 100, 100 and lead 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and manganese 5, 5, 5 ppm and mercury also 0 0.01, 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 mg per liter. Similarly, nickel, nitrate, oil and grease, phenolic compounds, dissolved phosphorus, total suspended solid, cyanide, pH, selenium, zinc, all parameters are measured and as mentioned here in this table, we will go through. Now, we are going to discuss about the quality parameters and the values for industrial effluents emission. So, which emissions are come from industry basically effluent here we are talking about effluent. So, what effluent is coming from the industry after treatment in the industrial premise it is getting entry into uh, similar way it may be discharged to the river through canal or it may be discharged to the public sewer for further treatment and it may be land for irrigation or it may be possible that this is available in the marine or coastal area. So, directly can go to sea. So, that way different options are available for industrial effluents and emissions particularly the effluents. Okay. So, here the parameters are like say color and odor. So, all efforts should be made to remove color and unpleasant odor as far as practicable. So, this is CPCB standard the we should utmost we should take utmost care to remove all objectionable odor and the color should also be acceptable. And suspended solid that is equal to 100 for inland surface water and 600 mg per liter for public sewers and 200 for land for irrigation and particle size of suspended solids shall pass 850 micron sieve and pH 5.5 to 9 for all the cases and temperature shall not exceed 5 degree above the receiving water temperature. So, that we should not allow the discharge in such a way that the receiving body temperature increases more than 5 degree centigrade. I have solved one numerical problems in the previous class as well. Oil and grease that is 10 mg per liter, 20 mg per liter, 10 mg and 20 mg per liter respectively. So, this is mg per liter not magne magnesium it is mg per liter. Some other general standards like say total residual chlorine, ammoniacal nitrogen, total general nitrogen, free ammonia, biochemical oxygen demand that is 3 day at 27 degree centigrade or 5 day at 20 degree centigrade whatever we can consider, chemical oxygen demand mg per liter and then arsenic and mercury as a g. Okay. So, these are the values for different disposal like say inland surface water, public sewers, land for irrigations and marine and coastal area. We may have 
lead also cadmium, hexavalent chromium, total chromium, copper, zinc, selenium, nickel, cyanide. So, all the values are provided here for inland surface water, for public sewers, for land irrigation and then marine or coastal area. Now, again we can have others also that is fluoride, dissolved phosphates, sulphide, phenolic compounds, radioactive materials like alpha beta emitters materials may be present in it and bioassay test. So, these are also necessary for uh, industrial effluents from case to case basis some in some facilities the nature of the waste water is like this. So, we need to ascertain that these quality are also being satisfied. So, fluoride here 2 and it is 15 and 15 and then dissolved phosphate is 5, sulphide 2 and 5, phenolic compounds 1, 5 and 5 here. So, these radioactive materials 10 to the power minus 7 and 10 to the minus 6 mg per liter. So, this is the permissible limit and bioassay test 90 percent survival of fish after 96 hours in 100 percent effluent. So, this is you know one indication that my water is of good quality, my fish is surviving means the water quality is good. So, automatically it gives indications that there is no problem with the water. So, that is the concept the 90 percent survival of fish after 96 hours in 100 percent effluent the same is applicable for all type of discharge locations. Now, we will see some other parameters also that is manganese, iron, vanadium, nitrate, nitrogen. So, here these values are for manganese 2, here 2 and 2 and then iron also 3, 3 and 3 and vanadium 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2 mg per liter and nitrate 10 and 20 in case of marine 20 and in case of. So, these are the general standards and these standards shall be applicable for industries operations or processes other than those industries operations or processes for which standards have been specified in schedule of the environmental protection rule 1989. As I mentioned you that industries produce different type of pollutants and which enter into the wastewater stream and the effluent stream. So, special treatment is needed for those industries. So, that way these are the those are described for industry specific and mentioned in the CPCB and these which we have discussed now that is generally applicable for all type of industries. And now we will see some wastewater generation there are for industry some restriction is also there. Any type of industry one is your quality of wastewater that that standard what will be the values of the quality parameters that is there. Another is per production of unit amount of product what is the water requirement or utilization that is also given by the CPCB that guideline is also given. Like for example, say integrated iron and steel plant if we consider. So, the quantum of water use will be 16 meter cube per ton of finished steel. Similarly, if we consider sugar then 0 0.4 meter cube per ton of kin crust. Now, this value has changed now and this values changes from time to time by CPCB it is around 0.2 now. And then pulp and paper industries that may be large pulp and paper, pulp and paper rayon grade pulp okay, small pulp and paper also agro residue based and waste based. So, for all these different cases we have different amount of water can be allowed. So, like for this case 175 of meter cube per ton of paper produced here 150 meter cube per ton that is rayon like this and in this case we are having for agro residue 150 meter cube per ton of grain processed and for waste paper based 50 meter cube per ton of paper produced. So, these are uh, also one way of presenting the, the, the standards or the guidelines to maintain the environmental quality and for fermentation industries it may be maltary, brewery, 
and distillery. So, their water consumption are also different as prescribed by CPCB. If we consider the caustic soda, then it may be membrane cell process or may be mercury cell process. So, their water requirement is also different 1 meter cube per ton of caustic soda produced excluding cooling tower blow down and here 4 meter cube per ton of caustic soda produced mercury bearing and 10 percent blow down permitted for cooling blow down permitted for cooling tower. So, these are the some quantum of water use for the production of different products in these different types of industries. And now for textile industry it may be man made fiber say nylon and polyester, viscose staple fiber and viscose filament yarn. So, in that case you see the different water requirement is recommended okay, or guidelines has been given. Similarly, for tanneries it is 28 meter cube per ton of raw hide and starch glucose and related product again it is 8 meter cube per ton of maize crust and dairy 3 meter cube per ton of milk produced and natural rubber processing industries 4 meter cube per ton of rubber and fertilizer industry that may be straight nitrogenous fertilizer, it may be straight phosphatic fertilizer that is single superphosphate SSP and triple superphosphate TSP. So, here SSP single superphosphate and TSP ok. The for the production of these two you know SSP and TSP chemicals are different for SSP we can use sulfuric acid for TSP we use phosphoric acid and so their water requirement is also may be different to some extent and that is why you see here straight phosphoric fertilizer excluding manufacture of any acid and then complex fertilizer. So, here the recommended water requirement are different. Now, we will see load based standards. So, we have seen the general standard then we have seen that the another type of standard that is per product how much water can be used. So, that way or can be generated waste water can be generated that way and this is load based standard that is a oil refinery industry. So, oil grease, oil and grease, phenol, BOD, suspended solids and sulphide. So, we have seen that for waste water general standard will be applicable apart from that quantum in kg per 1000 tons of crude process that also be applicable for this type of industry like say oil refining industry. So, oil grease 10 kg per 1000 tons of crude processed phenol 0 0.70 BOD 10.50 suspended solids 14 and sulphide 0 0.35. So, these are on load based standards. Similarly, large pulp and paper new print rayon grade plants of capacity above 24000 ton per annum in that case you know total organic chloride TOC oil TOCL that is 2 kg per ton of products. So, these are also some load based standards given for different types of industries. Now, I will we will be discussing on the emission that is concentration based standards general emission standards it is shown here the different parameters that is particulate matter, total fluoride, asbestos, mercury, chlorine, hydrochloric acid, vapor and mist and then sulfuric acid mist, carbon monoxide, lead. So, you see the values here. So, that is in mg per normal meter cube uh, the concentration should not be more than that that is for particulate matter should not be more than 150 mg per normal meter cube. So, total fluoride should be less than 25 normal meter cube or equal to and then for asbestos 4 fibers per cc and dust should not be more than 2 mg per normal meter cube, mercury 0 0.2 mg per normal meter cube, chlorine 15 mg per normal meter cube, hydrochloric 
acid vapor 35 mg per normal meter cube and sulfuric acid mist 50 mg per normal meter cube and carbon monoxide is 1 percent lead 10 mg per normal meter cube. So, this is we are talking about the emission the concentration of these pollutants in the air and equipment based standards are also available. For example, say power generation capacity say power generation capacity and steam generation capacity will help to decide the stack height. For example, if 500 megawatt plant or it is more than 500 megawatt. So, stack height is 275 and then here 200 to 210 megawatt and above or less than 500 megawatt it is 220 it is less than 200 or 210 megawatt. So, that can be determined by h equal to q to the power 0.3, where q is emission rate of SO2 in kg per hour. Okay. So, similarly steam generation this is power generation capacity similarly for steam generation capacity less than 2 ton per hour less than 2 to 5 ton per hour okay. 5 to 10 ton per hour 10 to 15 ton per hour 15 to 10 ton per hour 20 to 25 ton per hour and 25 to 30 ton per hour more than 30 ton per hour. So, here the heights are also given that is 0 9. So, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27 and 30 or as per formula this formula we can use whichever is more that we have to use. When h, h is the physical height of the stack in meter and these are all in meter and q is the emission rate of sulphur in kg per hour. Then load or mass based standards are also available. So, that is fertilizer, urea plant which is commissioned prior to 1st January 1982 and somewhere which is commissioned after this time period. So, particulate matter, particulate matter are parameter for consideration and in this case 2 kg per ton of product are here 0 0.5 kg per ton of product. Similarly, for copper, lead, zinc smelter, sulphur dioxide is our parameter and 4 kg per ton of concentrated acid produced. Similarly, for nitric acid, oxides of nitrogen is our quality parameter and 3 kg per ton of weak acid produced and sulfuric acid, sulphur dioxide and here standard 2 kg per ton of concentrated acid produced and cocoven that is carbon monoxide and 3 kg per ton of coke produced. So, these are the standards. Now, we will see the noise standards. So, the noise pollution regulation and control rules 2000 the as per this rule say industrial area commercial area, residential area and silence zone has been identified say area code A, B, C, D and for this daytime and night time noise level is defined. For A daytime 75, night time 70, for B that is commercial area it is 65 and 55 and residential area 55 and 45 and the silence zone 50 and 40. So, this is now this daytime and night time what is daytime? The daytime is 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and night time 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. and silence zone is an area comprising not less than 100 meters around hospitals, educational institutions, courts, religious places or any other area which is declared as such by the competent authority. So, this is the standard of noise pollution and now we will see the auto fuel quality standard. So, if we see the diesel specification and gasoline gasoline specification. So, in 1996 we had one specification 2000 it was modified 2005 it is modified 2010 it is modified. So, what we see here the qualities are uh, parameters quality parameters are becoming more stringent. So, 1996 you see sheet number 45 now it has increased to 51 in 2010 and sulphur was 0.5 percentage now it has been reduced to 0.035 at 2010 and then you know poly aromatics was not considered at that time, but 2010 it is considered that is 11 percentage. So, that is for diesel and similarly for gasoline also you see 
benzene it was 5 in 1996 it has reduced to 1 in 2010 lead it was 0.15 it has been 0.005 in 2010 sulfur 0 0.1 now it is reduced to 0 0.015 okay so aromatics and oxygen were not there so these were introduced in 2005 with higher value and 2010 these values are also changed okay so this is the fuel quality standard now vehicular emission norms are also available in the country the these norms are applicable for cars for two wheeler three wheeler and for buses heavy vehicles that is called and those standards are different so 1991 the first norms we had on this then 1996 norms 1998 norms 2000 norms now we have after 2000 we have Bharat stage 2, stage 3, stage 4 and directly stage 6 it is implemented is 2021. So, you see here carbon monoxide generation in gram per kilometer of travel was 14.3 to 27.1 in 1991, but now it has reduced to 1. So, drastically changed the rules have I mean the regulation has changed. Similarly, hydrocarbon and NOx it has been changed from say 2 to 0.16. So, you see how drastically the, the changes have been made in the quality to regulate the air quality. And for two three wheelers also here like this. So, again also you see 12, 30, 12 to 30 CO gram per kilometer here it is 1 and here is hydrocarbon plus NOx gram per kilometer it was here 8 to 12 now here only hydrocarbon 0.1 gram per kilometer and NOx 0 0.09 gram per kilometer. So, extremely the values have been reduced to maintain the air quality and here emissions from the heavy diesel vehicles like the buses, trucks etcetera. Here also the norms had changed you see the how drastically it had changed. So, hydrocarbon also changed, NOx had changed and PM was not there included at that time it has been included midway and now it has been reduced to a very lower value up to this in this class and thank you very much for your patience.